Today we're taking a look at the Brisbane. This is a brand new Commonwealth Tier 10 cruiser. And a little bit inspired by a Minotaur. I think we can all see that. So just to get that out of the way, yes, you have a giant, very easy to hit Citadel. But what makes this ship special really is its loadout. Compared to the Minotaur, we don't get a smoke. There's just no option here to change out any of these. We still retain a super heal, which is great. And we get a pretty standard hydro. The difference is the radar is a 12 kilometer radar on non-Russian ships. I think that's a first that we have a non-Russian cruiser with a 12 kilometer radar. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I can see that being very, very dangerous considering our concealment here with this build is 9.8 kilometers. So you get a stealth radar. And with this ship, you also get HE shells. So no longer do we have the extremely good pen angles and um, the arming time of the Minotaur, making the armor piercing basically like HE shells that just always pen. Um, we just have normal AP, but we do gain the high explosive, which is really nice. 30 mil pen here, 10% fire chance. Although notice our reload, 4.4 seconds. Base is around five seconds. Uh, so Minotaur definitely has a DPM advantage, and there's a few other cruisers that out DPM the Brisbane. So it's not like we're just gaining a full Minotaur with AG. Uh, it's not quite like that, but it is going to be very strong. The next thing you should know is the torpedoes are pretty nuts. Uh, the build here is pretty focused on them, I will say, but 13 and a half kilometers of range, easily able to stealth torp here, and they do a ton of damage. And they actually go reasonably quick. Uh, 68 knots is not too bad. The commander here that I'm running though does have a little bit of a focus on them. I wasn't sure if I wanted to focus on the torpedoes this much, uh, but as soon as I got through a bit of a normal build where, sure, we'll take consumables enhancements to give us more radar time. Um, we'll take superintendent to give us more healing, more radars, of course. Survivability expert's great for just living longer in some of these squishy cruisers. Concealment expert, and then I didn't know where to go. I thought maybe a top grade gunner would be really good, but then 9.8 kilometers, unlikely that we're gonna have a lot of people within that range, especially now that we have a 12 kilometer radar. It's not like we're getting into that um, detection and radar range where as soon as you radar a DD, you know that DD is spotted within your detection range and you're gaining that 8% buff. That's not necessarily going to happen here. Didn't really feel the need to run IFHE yet. We'll see, I haven't actually played it for you guys yet. Uh, but heavy HE and sap, I wanted to retain my concealment, so I just thought, you know what, let's chuck some skills into the torps and see how they go. If people push into us, it's gonna hurt, because we have a lot of these, as we know. Uh, 4x5, that is quite a bit of torpedo power. Oh, of course, we do have to swap sides, which I don't think is gonna be too much of a problem. Our AA, hopefully, is gonna be decent, 6.9 kilometer range is pretty nice. No defensive fire here though, so we'll see how that ends up working. Um, maneuverability wise, expect the acceleration of a Minotaur and probably the maneuverability. The rudder shift here isn't amazing. Um, so the Brisbane here, I'm excited to give it a go. Um, let's see how, uh, how it performs in some games. It actually performs really well. The Brisbane has been a very high battle impact chip. Although I haven't really found myself dealing tons of damage with it. And we'll talk about the gun performance in a little bit, but we have to talk about the radar. That is of course the standout feature of the Brisbane. We have a 12 kilometer radar here. So we're just able to radar this gearing as soon as our Yu Yang's radar runs out. That's what spotted him initially. Look at how far away I am from the cap zone. And I'm still able to radar the whole thing, plus quite a bit outside. <laughs> we pop our radar and then he's stuck in it for a little bit longer. We're a little bit lucky here to have a DD smoke for us um, early on, no carrier spotting us, so we can sit here very aggressively. But even approaching a lot of these cap zones, having a two kilometer buffer between your concealment, detectability, and your radar range is ridiculous. It's one of the things that made a lot of the Russian cruisers pretty insanely strong, right? The uh, Petro, of course that ship is pretty tanky on top of that, but to have a stealth radar, is really, really, really good. Um, Tromp just gets spotted there at nearly 12 kilometers. It's ridiculous. I think it's just a little bit too much, to be honest with you. However, I think the Brisbane does struggle when it comes to DPM and firepower. I'm really struggling with leading my target here in this first game. 
If you're used to your Minotaur, especially if you're used to playing a radar Minotaur, I think you'll probably enjoy Brisbane. Although, you may feel like the DPM is a little bit lacking anyway. Uh, but if you're used to the shell velocity, how the ship has to play, playing around its gigantic Citadel, I definitely got clapped pretty hard a couple of these games, uh, you'll probably enjoy this ship. For me though, I didn't really enjoy it too much. I found the DPM to be just a little bit too lacking. And while the torpedoes are good, it's much like my uh, comments on the Jinan so far. Torps are amazing when people push into you, but people just don't really push into you. That's kind of how I feel like this game is played a lot of the time. So then the torps don't become quite as useful. There we go, take a nice hit from the Montana. Pretty lucky to be alive, although I guess he hit pretty far back on our ship. We have plain ASWs, which is pretty sick. Uh, we actually are capable of dealing with subs Somewhat then, we're actually able to do some damage. Our hydro and radar will do a decent job spotting them, of course. And uh, hopefully we can take out this full out. In this game though, didn't really have a lot of opportunities to uh, get much done here. I spent some time in the sea cap uh, in between uh, some of the cuts that I'm going through here. I was waiting for them to push back. There was a Yamato, Slava, Montana, um, Maybe in Ohio or Vermont or something like that. They were all in their spawn, much like they are now. I was waiting for them to come pushing back into us. And then I'd try and farm them out from in the sea cap. But I couldn't. And then I had to close this open water gap. And we end up losing this game. Unfortunate. Uh, but that lack of smoke can be a little bit of a hindrance. If you're not used to the open water radar minnow kind of play style on some of these open water maps. It's not the easiest thing to play. Uh, next game here, I wanted to show you how insane some of these flanking routes can be on some of these maps. If we're allowed to get into this 9-10 position here, um, notice our DDs are playing pretty aggressively as well, which is quite nice for us in this case. Um, just look at how insane our radar coverage is. It is the blue line, by the way, on the minimap. The solid blue line is our radar coverage. It's ridiculous. And even though I'm not really going to be able to do much damage um, over these islands, just having that radar threat Anytime someone tries to touch this cap here next to us, um, it's going to be ridiculous how much pressure you can apply on the enemy team just by radaring them. Getting them all spotted forces them all to turn away. So here we go. I'm going to use it because I know this uh, battleship's coming around the corner. I want to know what the timing is, how quickly I need to leave. That's really what I'm thinking about here. I don't want to get caught flat broadside onto it probably then. That ship isn't the most accurate, but let's be honest, Minotaurs pop pretty easily, even with bad dispersion battleships. Uh, so, you know, I don't get any damage in on the daring even. My aim was pretty junk, um, at least initially while playing this ship. And they're just forced to turn away. They're all running away. All the enemy team is running away from this decap here. And then we just have a Proisen to farm all to ourselves. The torpedoes will do some good work here though. Um, the damage output is pretty insane when you do land them. But I gotta say, I really notice the lack of DPM here. I find that when I'm hitting and getting damaging hits, the numbers seem to be pretty low, and the time between reloads feels kind of long for a light cruiser. I know that the torpedo power is immense, so that's more than likely where the uh, balancing factor is there. But the DPM differences are kind of astonishing. Minotaur AP DPM is 600,000 base. Uh, the Brisbane has 384,000 base, so a pretty massive decline there. Um, and that's really just down to reload. They both have the same AP alpha. Just reload. Although the AP shells on Minnow are much better. I think I mentioned that earlier, but the Brisbane doesn't get the short fuse. It doesn't get the improved pen angles of the Minotaur on the AP, so just normal AP. And then the HE shells are decent, I guess, um, but they don't have an especially amazing fire chance, up to like 10% of the build that I'm running here. And uh, the DPM is just okay, you're 258,000 base HE DPM, but let's take a comparable ship like the Worcester, for example, also a light cruiser at tier 10 with radar and HE. Uh, the Worcester has 344,000 base HE DPM. So yeah, I found it to be a little bit lacking. Um, I may not be a Minotaur player, but I do love playing some Worcester, and I did definitely notice uh, that difference. However, having this extra torpedo power is pretty nice for pushing up into closer range positions, forcing people to push around corners into these torps is really nice. Um, and getting flanks off with this ship is awesome because the 12 kilometer radar is just ridiculous. How much information you're able to gather, and sometimes it's not even about you yourself being able to shoot at the enemy destroyer. 
Sometimes it's just about giving your team a heads up of where the enemy DDs are. Notice we get spotted here, open water, instantly pop our radar. That's something not a lot of ships can do. Um, but even radaring through islands, getting huge amounts of damage in on, uh, on DDs in cap zones. You may not be able to shoot at them, but your teammates more than likely will. Take a massive hit there from the Montana. But just look at the radar range, this blue circle here. It's ridiculous how much ground we can cover uh, with this radar. It's truly insane, a 12 kilometer radar on, uh, on a ship with this kind of concealment. It's really, really strong. I found myself able to impact a lot of games that way, although this one was a little bit more of a blowout. You'll notice I'm always trying to get on these flanking routes. I really do enjoy that uh, in a lot of these ships, surprising enemy DDs. Um, but even here, just notice how long it takes us to kill this gross boy. You'd think it would just melt instantly. Um, and it does, but it takes a little while. It just takes a little bit longer than uh, than I would think. So the Brisbane, I think, will be a, a very interesting ship, especially for those of you that love uh, Radar Minotaur. Uh, Radar Minotaur. I know you're out there. Uh, you're just definitely <laughs> able to do something that I definitely can't. Take me a lot of practice to really figure that kind of playstyle out much better. Um, but I do think that even for the average player who maybe isn't so good at that open water radar minotaur playstyle, playing it like a Worcester, playing it around islands, hiding behind islands, waiting for the enemy team to come to you, farming damage from behind those islands, and then using the radar to support your DDs in cap zones, will also be a very strong and very viable tactic to use. Um, so I think it will be a good ship for most people. Um, just the people who are good at Radar Minotaur will probably get the most out of this ship. That's what uh, I'm trying to say. We're trying to clear this flank here. How do we get find this Holland? We're trying to chase him down. Oh, we have a 12 kilometer radar. <laughs> we just find him. <laughs> because we're covering like a quarter of the entire map in radar right now. It's a long, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Um, my preference, of course, would be uh, that this doesn't have a 12 kilometer hide, our radar. Maybe it just give it the normal Minotaur radar. That would be uh, a little more interesting. And then it's just an HE radar minnow. Um, maybe that's not special enough for the campaign that they're planning, but I think it would have been just fine. The ship does well enough farming. I think that given the right opportunity, it'll do enough damage over to some of these islands. It's not gonna be anything close to the Smolensk or Colbert for these uh, small caliber HE pressure kind of ships, uh, but it'll do its work. They don't get some fires, but it's not going to be this insanely overpowered farming ship, I don't think. The real power here comes from that crazy utility from the radar. I didn't really get an opportunity to test out the AA very much. People tend to avoid Minotaurs in their carriers anyway, and considering it's mostly just copied over AA, they're going to try and avoid you as well when it comes to the planes. So you don't really have to worry too badly about that, I don't think. But you don't really have an opportunity to slot defensive fire, even if you wanted to. Um, not that it's the most useful of skills, but <laughs> yeah, that isn't actually an option. You're stuck with the consumables that you see here. That's all you get. The super heal has definitely saved my life a lot of times in this ship. So very happy to have that still. Um, but even here, just farming Ohio superstructure. Look at this shell damage. 700, 355, 700. That's not great damage output. I don't know. The other thing I noticed about this ship was the dispersion seemed a little bit bad sometimes. Um, that's tough for me to say it's worse than Minotaur because I don't, I haven't played that ship too much. But I think that one also suffers from some wonky dispersion every once in a while as well. So that's my thoughts so far on the Brisbane. I think it will be a solid tier 10 cruiser. I would expect to see it in a lot of comp competitive scenarios where 12 kilometer radar at this concealment is just ridiculous. Um, but in random battles, the lack of DPM might hold it back just a little bit. As for the campaign, I'm not really sure how difficult it's going to look at the moment, but even if you can't finish the campaign, coal is one of the easier of the uh, tough resources to get. It's not as hard as steel or research points to get. So uh, in a few months or whenever they decide to release this ship for coal, um, you'll be able to get it that way. So I wouldn't be too concerned if the web campaign becomes... Uh, something that's very difficult. But that is my thoughts on the Brisbane so far. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Appreciate you guys uh, watching this video and have a great rest of your day.